The 10 best candlesticks that you will find right now in the markets, how to trade candlesticks and how to use them in your trading in general. So hello, welcome back and let's take a look at the 10 best candlesticks that we can find right now in the markets. I will provide some tips on how to make candlestick trading work and how to use them candlesticks in trading actually. And what I want to do is provide something like a top down approach. So as you can see, I am here on the weekly chart right now and I usually trade um, anything from the daily to the two hour and I'm very, very rarely on the, on the weekly chart. But when or if you want to make multi time frame analysis work, what you could be doing is that you go to the weekly time frame and you look for candlestick confirmation and for candlestick pattern. And then you go down to your lower time frame and you look for signals and trades in the direction of the of the candlestick signal. So let's start with the first one here. We are here with the Canadian Japanese yen and we will take a look at a, at a very nice cross section of 10 different Forex pairs. And what you can see is uh, we are here on the weekly chart, obviously, and the current candlestick or the last week's candlestick um, is or was an engulfing bar, which means that it completely engulfs the previous candle. Um, very interesting candlestick formation here. And especially if we look at the whole context, uh, when we zoom out, you can see where is this happening. It's happening at a very important uh, trend line, which dates back even a few years ago. Um, so this is quite interesting where the price action and where the price found resistance or support in this case. And when we look a little bit higher, you can see we have here a trend line in the markets, a downward sloping trend line with one, two, three touch points. Then here the market breaks it and retests it. And the retests happens with the engulfing candlestick on the weekly chart. So the bias for the Canadian Japanese yen could be bullish. I don't really recommend that you trade them just by themselves. What you should be doing is that use the candlestick as a confluence factor and as a maybe as a directional filter. So you would go down to the lower time frames, whatever this may be, you could go down all the way to the four hour or to the uh, to the two hour to the one hour. And then you start looking for trades into this direction, whatever this may be. So here was uh, where this um, candlestick uh, where the, the new week opened around here and then you can see the price did move higher. Uh, we did have a break and retest pattern here as well. And right now the market is consolidating again. So if the price breaks to the upside, there's a high likelihood that the market would or could continue its uh, its uptrending phase. Of course, this is not a guarantee and nothing works 100% of the time. But the, the idea is just to get a, a basic um, directional filter for your trading. You could also take, for example, a long term moving average. And in this case, you can see the 200 period moving average acts as a very nice um, resistance filter that now the market has broken. And now it seems like the market has cleared the way to the to the top as well. You can see how the market is slowly here changing the trending pattern from lower lows and lower highs to here now make an attempt to make higher highs and higher lows. So really interesting how this is uh, all coming together. And when it comes to candlesticks, there are three principles um, that you should always think about. First of all, it's location. Where does the candlestick pattern happen? Um, and where does where is it located in the overall picture? Context, what happens around it? And the size, does the candlestick size make sense? So you don't want to have a very tiny pin bar. You don't want to have just a small inside bar. You want to have a candlestick that really stands out that has meaning. Also location, you want to have um, that it happens at a breakout point um, here with a break and retest adds a lot of context. Um, you could use a moving average, you could use Fibonacci's as well. So make sure that the candlestick is not just a random candlestick somewhere in the middle of nowhere, but it really actually makes sense. Uh, it's, it's at a new trend or it's a trend continuation at a very important support and resistance area. We can take a look at the Aussie Canadian dollar. And when we zoom out here on the weekly chart, you can see that the market here sold off quite a bit. And afterwards, it seems like the market put in here a bottom formation after a very strong downtrend. And last week, the market had a pin bar here. 
very interesting pin bar, very strong rejection here of the lows. So it could be, and for now it, isn't, it didn't happen, that we might have more of a bullish tendency in the market. Of course, just a pin bar alone is really not enough to just justify a trade, but you could go down to the to the lower time frames and you could start looking for an entry pattern. For example, let's take this off. You could look for a breakout here out of this pattern, which looks like some type of very not textbook like head and shoulder with the left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder like this. Um, this could be your trigger. You could use many other triggers as well. Uh, just an idea, but use it, the, the weekly filter to look only for trades into the direction of the candlestick. It could improve the quality uh, of your signals. The Euro Aussie, also a very nice um, signal that for now hasn't really been triggered. So if we zoom in, you can see last week's candle was uh, a pin bar and not just any pin bar. You can see when we zoom out, the market has been in an uptrend. However, the uptrend is not really um, strong. The trend line is very weak compared to the beginning of the trend. So you can clearly see that the trend here has been slowing down recently. So you can see right now, where did the pin bar happen? It happened right at this previous resistance area, which seems to hold for now. You have a very important support level below this level as well. Don't forget that. So this could also give you a little bit of a, of a trade idea. So you have your bullish direction here, maybe from the pin bar. And then once the market breaks to the downside, you could start looking for trade entries on a lower time frame. Maybe even you just use the daily time frame or you wait for a breakout on the on the lower time frames. But this could give you just an idea of of a signal or a um, of a direct directional filter. The Euro Turkish Lira has a very interesting pattern as well. When we draw our trend line, you can see that the market is in an upward sloping trend. However, the trend here lately hasn't been very strong and we can connect here the two highs. So the market is more or less stuck in a in a contracting market uh, where the market and the price action is slowing down. The swings are becoming smaller and smaller, obviously, right now. And last week we had here an engulfing bearish candle. So really huge engulfing candle. Where is it happening? So we have the concept of location, a previous high point, which has served as a as a previous pin bar. And you can see after this one, the market did sell out already. So we have context, we have location. Um, and the candle size also does really matter because it's a huge uh, bearish engulfing candlestick. And for that, you could use then you could use this as a directional filter, go down to the 12 hour, to the daily, whatever the time frame that you are using, and then you can can start looking for trade entry patterns as a as a as a directional filter. You could even take this a step further and go to the lower time frame, um, which is in this case the daily chart. And now look for another candlestick pattern. Maybe wait for here. If you get another engulfing bar, you have two um, in the direction of the trend. If this one continues a little bit further and then you could look for even uh, more confluence and add ons to this candlestick. Let's go to gold, which is a very, very interesting candlestick as well. Where is it happening at a previous high point? So the last candlestick here is a very huge um, pin bar taking out the previous highs, looks like a failed and fake breakout. And now you could start looking for bearish trades on the lower time frames. So whatever your trade idea is or your trading plan, look for um, signals on the on the lower time frames. You could go all the way down to the four hour or the two hour. Um, that's really up to you, which time frame you feel comfortable with. And you could use the, the daily, uh, the weekly chart as some type of directional filter and obviously not always will you get a decent candlestick on the on the weekly time frame and if that's the case you would skip the you would skip the market and wait for another one or look for another one so you could for example here wait for gold to make a lower low if the market breaks here 1540 or if you want to look for a pullback strategy whatever this might be you could use the directional filter on the higher time frames we can take a look at crude oil, which is also super interesting right now. Where is this happening at a previous um, flip zone? So you can see previous support turns into resistance and now once again resistance. Last week there was a huge engulfing candlestick taking out um, the previous highs here and moving into the previous um, high here. So very, very great confluence here overall. Nice context. You can see here on the lower time frames, you can see the spike 
uh, even more pronounced, which is great as well. What you could do is now obviously wait for here a retest of the of the uh, um, of the trend line. You could wait for a pullback into this level, or you could go for just a continuation signal. But right now it doesn't look as nicely probably on the lower time frames. So we'll have to see. Not always will you be able obviously <clears throat> to use this to make a trading idea. But this is a great way of just filtering trade ideas and to just filtering um, setups in general. We have the Singapore Yen, which is already kind of on its way. You can see what is happening right now here in the market. Looks like some type of inverse head and shoulder. And we have an upward sloping trend line connecting the highs here. Last week we had a huge engulfing candlestick. So really nice, um, really nice pattern here. Good context overall. It did find support here at the previous highs, uh, lows just a little bit above them. Uh, very nice candlestick and this week the market is already rallying. So this looks quite promising. <clears throat> the market did break above those highs here uh, and is now on its way to even make further highs. Overall you can see that there's quite a lot of room to the upside um, that this downtrending attempt seems to have failed for now and the market is rallying back into the middle of the range. The US dollar yen, kind of a similar setup, um, probably somewhat um, correlated, a high um, engulfing candlestick here. After the week before that was a huge bearish candle, which was rejected by last week's candle, a very, very strong bullish candle here. Can see we can draw some type of um, trend line here where the market is also retesting that. So this is something that you will see um, over and over again, a retest and a break and retest of a trend line. Also obviously some type of inverse head and shoulder and there's a good chance that the market might rally back into the range or maybe even into those highs here. So you can use that as a, as a directional filter. Um, can see here this is where the market broad, broke above the previous highs and this is then happening this week. So very nice how you can put this together. And again, this is probably not enough to just trade it on themselves. I'm not advocating, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of trading candlesticks on their own. I think that candlesticks are too weak to trade them on itself, but using them as a directional filter on the higher time frames might be something that you could add to your trading strategy if you trade on the lower time frames to just narrow down the markets that you trade and find high expectancy uh, and higher expectancy uh, trading signals. So let me know in the comments if you enjoy those videos, if you want me to do more of those, maybe follow up videos. Um, and if you do, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, and then I hope to see you in one of my next videos.